Eric here at Team Eccentric, and I'm bringing you guys my Herald of Perfection deck profile as of September 2018. This deck got new support uh, recently in the uh, Cybernetic Horizon set uh, in the form of the Celestial Observatory, which allows you to shuffle a level 6 monster or place a level 6 monster to the bottom of the deck and draw two cards, uh, essentially increasing this deck's uh, consistency. Um, this deck was never really inconsistent to begin with, it was never really horrendous in that regard, but uh, you know, it never hurts to be even more consistent. Um, and I do really like this deck a lot. It's very, very fun. I'd say it's probably tier two, tier three at the most, um, but uh, it's still a very great deck. I am not, however, playing the incantations that recently came out in Cybernetic Horizon because I feel as if they do not contribute to the deck's overarching strategy, which is to summon Herald of Perfection and have as many fairies in your hand as possible to just say no to everything your opponent attempts to activate. Um, but, that, you know, that, I mean, that's that's really neither here nor there. Uh, some people like that engine, some people don't in this deck. It's just really kind of dependent upon player preference. Um, but without further ado, let's get right on the profile. So, we're starting it off. Triple Herald of Perfection. This is the boss monster and your win condition. You summon this with as many fairies as in your hand as possible, and essentially you could probably just win the game there. Um, it isn't really the biggest monster in regards to attack points, however, defense points, it is a 28 uh, defender um, that allows you, like I said, to negate uh, one thing per fairy in your hand. Uh, and there are even turns where you can end on two of this with three or four fairies in your hand, which can be pretty ridiculous. So uh, the other only ritual monster we play is Triple Cyber Angel Benton. This is your plus card. Uh, when this card is tributed uh, for any reason, uh, in, in this particular case, Herald of Perfection, you get to search one light attribute fairy monster from your deck to your hand. Um, you know, it's, it's, it just allows you to dig into your deck for whatever combo pieces you need in that particular time, uh, as well as just allowing you to plus in order to resolve Herald of Perfection's effect as many times as possible. So that's that. That's it for the Ritual Monsters. Now we're getting into the supporting engines. Um, we play the Star Seraph engine, the Scepters, and the Sovereignties. Essentially, uh, this is uh, basically probably the most consistent draw engine in the deck. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys know how this uh, engine works. You summon Scepter with a Sovereignty in your hand, and you basically get to draw as well as uh, summon a uh, rank four with three materials. It's very, very good. Um, for your consistency as well as establishing some kind of board presence, especially given you go first, you can summon more burrows, take a card out of your opponent's hand, uh, you can draw cards. It just allows you to uh, increase the ceiling of whatever plays you're making. Um, so then after that, uh, triple Manju uh, is kind of standard. You just summon this, you get a search. And after that, uh, probably the best card regarding going second, in my personal opinion, in this deck is Triple Gale Dagra. Um, essentially, Gale Dagra allows you to pay 3,000 life points and then send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, which you will see um, my particular targets uh, momentarily. After that, uh, for the last two monsters, we play one uh, Arcelor Christia and one Honest. Uh, these both are searchable by Benton, so there's really no need to play any more than one of each. Um, not only that, you can always recur the Honest uh, using the ritual or the um, the field spell rather. Um, plus, uh, it, it, that these just allow your deck to be um, more uh, aggro essentially. Either well, this allows your deck to be more aggro, and this allows your deck to establish uh, some kind of board presence. Which um, not that the deck has any trouble doing that to begin with, but having that extra setup next to a herald with fairies in your hand. Um, there's, there's almost no way to come back from it. So, now we're getting into the spell cards. We have Triple, uh, Ritual Sanctuary. This is the field spell. Essentially what it allows you to do is discard one, uh, ritual, or one spell card. You can either add one light ritual monster or one ritual spell card from your deck to your hand. Uh, or, its secondary effect, you can activate each effect once per turn. You can, uh, target one, uh, light attribute fairy type monster in your graveyard. Um, and then shuffle spell cards in your graveyard equal to the amount of that monster's level into your deck and then special summon that monster from your graveyard. So essentially it's a monster reborn for fairies, which is, this is the uh, way that you would recur your Honest, you can recur your Star Seraphs as long as you have up to four, or as long as you have at least four uh, spell cards in your graveyard. That's just very, very good. And given that you get to discard a spell card from your hand, you know, it kind of 
contributes to its own effect. Uh, for the other spell cards, we play triple uh, Dawn of the Herald. This is the ritual spell, and what's good about this card is that um, it allows you to banish it from the graveyard and then add back one of the uh, one of the monsters you tributed for your Herald of Perfection. So if you tributed your Benton, you uh, get basically a plus. You tribute the Benton, summon the Herald, banish this from your graveyard, and then search off the Benton and then add the Benton back. So it's very very good. Um, then for the other three elves, we play triple pre prep of rice just to search your herald very uh, consistently. It just it's just a good plus one. Uh, you search both the ritual spell and the ritual monster. Uh, this is what rituals need, honestly. Um, it's definitely the best card for rituals. And then after that, we play triple preparation of rites just to uh, you know for consistency's sake to search the bentins or even if the herald if you already have the benton and the dawn of the herald in your hand, you can always just activate this and search your herald of perfection right off the bat. Um, and now for the two of spells, two of the new cards, Celestial Observatory, like I said, it essentially acts as a Murray of Greed. You place one level six monster from your hand or uh, face up from your side of the field to the bottom of your deck and draw two cards. You can only activate it once per turn, but um, that being said, uh, you know, being that it acts as a Murray of Greed, it just, uh, you know, contributes to the consistency of your deck, which this deck was never horrendous to begin with regarding consistency, but uh, it never hurts to have more. So two of those, and then we have two Potter Desires. Uh, I don't really care for Potter Desires as a card in this particular deck, given that we have so many integral uh, combo pieces. However, it is a plus one, and sometimes that plus one can uh, you know, be detrimental to your game state. Um, and then for the last two of in the deck, two Terraformings. And then for the two one-off spells in the deck, one monster, one, one soul charge. The crazy part about um, these is that you can recur these with your field uh, with your field spell, which basically you can keep uh, you know resolving your monster born and your soul charge, given you have the the uh, you know proper incentive to do so. It's just amazing. So now we're getting into the extra deck. Um, and this is the reason why I play the Geldoggers, by the way. Uh, triple uh, Elder Entity Unst. Essentially, when this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to pop something. So uh, that's why I say Geldogger is probably one of the best cards in this deck going second, because you summon the Geldogger, I pay three thousand, pop something. So, and then after that, you can also search with Geldogger using the Herald of the Arclight. When this card is sent to the graveyard, you can either add a ritual spell or a ritual monster from your deck to your hand. So, um, the best part is that Geldogger isn't necessarily once per turn. So you can, you know, as for, for, for every inter, uh, interval of 3,000 life points you have, you can uh, keep sending stuff, uh, which is great. So then after that, now we're moving into Link Monsters. Uh, I'm not playing an extensive Link lineup. I have seen uh, builds of this deck play the uh, the Agent Venus with the Mystical Shine Balls, and I do like that engine. However, I have tested it, and I I don't really care for uh, the um, you know the consistency issues that that particular engine uh, would uh, you know present. Uh, you know, I mean, granted, it does allow you to link climb a little better, and you know, you get to you know something like Firewall Dragons and things like that. But this deck is more on a casual level for me, particularly because I don't really care for this deck all that much. Uh, this is kind of just one of those fun decks that I play on the side here and there because I do like the artwork of the deck and I do kind of like appreciate the playstyle of the deck. Um, so we're getting into the Link Monsters. I apologize for ranting and rambling. So we have Decode Talker, Hippo Shinigan, one Akashic Magician, and one Underclock Taker. Like I said, a very conservative Link engine only because I don't play the Venus engine, which you know is essentially the best fairy-based engine regarding Link climbing. So you know I just kind of play these and then that's it. I was considering playing a bore load in this, but I don't really, I don't see the need for it. Um, now moving on to the Exceeds, we play one Evil Swarm of Roberos and one uh, Deltaros. Um, and then to complement the Deltaros, one uh, Satana and Stellar Diamond. This just negates all dark monsters. This allows you to pop stuff, and then this allows you to uh, rip cards from your opponent's hand or graveyard or, you know, do whatever uh, other funny shenanigans with the Star Seraph this allows you to do. And then last but not least for the other rank fours, we play one Baguska, because sometimes you do need to, uh, you know, stop your opponent from doing stuff. One Abyss Dweller, because graveyard uh, graveyard effects are still really prominent. Um, it's just, it, you know, Abyss Dweller has just always been great, and it always will be great, in my personal opinion. And then one Fairy Chair Girl, because, you know, more draw is more consistency. So uh, that's it for my Herald of Perfection deck profile, guys. Uh, I really appreciate any views you guys give us. Uh, I will be bringing you guys a dual video with this at some point in the near future. I've just been so busy with skateboarding. Um, now that it's essentially uh, autumn, uh, you know, there's 
less time for me to uh, focus on skateboarding. So I'm trying to get as many uh, tricks filmed uh, on my board as possible before I uh, am forced to resort to filming Yu-Gi-Oh videos all winter long. So, uh, you know, I, I am working on a skateboarding video and, you know, we, we, we do take uh, as many days as we can, you know, to try and get that done. But, um, you know, with all that uh, noted, uh, I am going to be focusing on Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit more now that, uh, you know, cold weather is on its way. So, uh, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, you know, give us any views uh, you guys can, you know, like, rate, subscribe, comment, um, you know, really appreciate it. Uh, Eric here with Team Eccentric, and I'm signing out. Rate and subscribe, leave your comments and ideas in the comment section below, and don't hesitate to give us respectful suggestions on content you want to see. Eric on behalf of the team saying take care, and Team Eccentric out.